But this morning we're going to continue on uh, this series that we started last Sunday called Stress Out. Stress Out. And last week we began looking at removing stress and embracing peace and joy. We talked about removing the things in our lives that bring stress and embracing the joy and peace. Because the reality is, stressful situations are going to come. Stressful situations are going to happen all the time. We cannot avoid stressful situations. If you have children, you are constantly every day in a stressful situation. If you have any kind of relationship, dating, marriage, you have stressful things throughout the day. If you work, if you have a job, if you got bills to pay, if you have a roof over your head, if you got to figure out how to get food on the table, you have stressful situations in your life. My point is that we all face things that bring stress, but they don't have to take over our lives. They don't have to consume us. They don't have to begin to weigh us down. But instead, we can remove the stress of stressful situations and embrace the peace and the joy that can only come from Jesus. And so last week, we talked about not rejoicing in things that are good, not rejoicing when things are the way we like, not rejoicing when things are how we want, not rejoicing in circumstances because those things change, but rejoicing in the Lord. Said, Paul told us, he said, rejoice in the Lord always, because the Lord does not change. The Lord is with us through the good, he's with us through the bad, he's with us when it's easy. Come on, how many know God is always there? So we're not rejoicing in our circumstances that can be taken from us, here in one moment, gone in the next, but we are rejoicing in the Lord, because he's always there. And he's always working on our behalf. He's always fighting on our behalf. And, and we see that in, in what we're going to look at today in 1 Kings chapter number 20. If you have your Bible, you can turn there. But in 1 Kings chapter number 20, we see that there's a king of Israel named Ahab. And Ahab is leading the Israelites into a battle against a group called the Aramaic. That, well, they're from Aram. I can't say their name. But they're from Aram, and they're led by a guy named Ben-Hadad. And so Ben-Hadad is the king of Aram. Ahab, he says, listen, look at this vast army. The Lord is going to deliver them into your hands today, and you will know that he is God. That's pretty good news, right? How many would celebrate if you were facing a major battle and the Lord spoke to you and said, hey, this army that you're facing, God's going to give them to you. That's exciting news. That's awesome. It's amazing. And sure enough, God wins them the battle. But King Ben-Hadad from Aram gets away and he escapes. And so it says, starting at verse number 20, each one struck down his opponent at that the Arameans fled with the Israelites in pursuit. But Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, escaped on horseback with some of his horsemen. And the king of Israel advanced and overpowered the horses and chariots and inflicted heavy losses on the Arameans. See, Ahab and the Israelites obeyed God's instruction and they saw God's deliverance. So often we want God's deliverance without obeying God's instructions. But they obey what God says They see the deliverance, but verse 22, and this is what I really want us to look at today. This is what I want us to hone in on today is verse number 22. The rest is kind of just to get us there. But in verse number 22 that we're going to spend all of our time at, it says, Afterward, the prophet came to the king of Israel and said, Strengthen your position and see what must be done, because next spring the king of Aram will attack you again. Israel wins this battle. They win, they're victorious. And before they can celebrate, before the confetti falls, before they're able to throw the party, before all these things happen, the prophet shows up again with another word from God. Israel fought the battle, saw the Lord bring deliverance. They're all excited. And now the prophet shows back up with another word and he doesn't pat them on the back. He doesn't say, good job. He doesn't give them their participation trophy. He shows up and he tells them, he says, listen, strengthen your positions. Strengthen your positions and see what must be done. Why? We just won the battle. Why do I need to strengthen my position? 
Why do I need to see what must be done? I just won the battle. You ever felt like you just won the victory and now it's all of a sudden you're having to prepare for another? You ever felt like you just overcame one thing and before you can fully celebrate what you overcame, it's like something else has happened? Something else is, is facing you in your life? The prophet, he says, you need to strengthen yourself. You need to see what must be done because next spring, the king of Aram will attack you again. Next spring, you're going to see another battle. You can celebrate, but you gotta strengthen because next time, next spring, you're going to see another battle. God speaks through the prophet and he says, listen, that victory was awesome, that was great. I'm glad we were able to do that together, that's cool. He said, but you need to prepare for the next time because there will be a next time. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And for the Israelites, it wasn't even a matter of when because the prophet said, next spring, you're gonna see another battle. And so often in our lives, we see a victory and we get so caught up in celebrating that victory and become comfortable that we don't prepare for the next battle. We don't prepare for what we're going to face. We don't prepare for what's ahead of us. And many times in our lives, our stress that we experience is caused by our procrastination. Where are my procrastinators at? You be honest, like I wait until the last minute. Yeah, anytime you get to crunch mode, right? And, and, and you're fixing to take a test and it's like, I got to cram. I got to get all this information in. I got to figure all this out. It's like, ah, oh, you're so stressed in that moment. And none of that stress would be there if you had properly prepared. So often, our, so often in our lives, our stress is caused by a lack of preparation. We win a battle. We get excited about the battle. We get all pumped about the battle and we don't prepare. But the prophet came to them and he said, listen, you need to prepare, you need to get ready because there will be another battle. So this morning, I wanna to talk to you on the subject training ground. Training ground. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for today and I just thank you that we're all gathered together here and gathered together online today. And Lord, I pray that you would help each and every one of us, no matter where we're at, to have ears to hear from you, to have hearts to receive from you, Lord, I pray that you would help each and every person to see and to hear from you, not to see and to hear from me. I thank you for what you're going to do today and what you're going to continue to do. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Now, how many of you are good at planting things? Like you have a green thumb. If you plant something, I'm really jealous of everyone raising their hand because Nicole and I, that's not us, right? If we plant something, like clockwork, it's gonna die. We plant it. We're all excited about it, it's gonna die. We try, but that's about as far as we get, right? That's about as, as good as we can do. So when we were in our last house, Nicole was like, hey, there's this open area in the yard, let's put a garden there. I was like, cool. I was like, why are we gonna put a garden? She said, well, it's gonna save us money. See, she knew what to say. She wasn't telling the truth, but she knew what to say. So she's like, it's gonna save us money because we're gonna plant this garden, we're gonna live off the land. Right? We're going to be many farmers. We're not going to have to pay for vegetables anymore. It's going to be beautiful. So I'm like, man, I love the sound of that. I love the sound of not having to pay for vegetables. I really love the sound of not having vegetables in the house at all. But if we're going to have to have them in the house, I love not having to pay for them. So we go, we get topsoil, we get all these plant things, whatever they are. And we bring them to the house and we work hard all day, all afternoon, and we get everything planted. And we were like, man, this, we're going to save so much money. And in the end, we ended up spending more money on the topsoil and the plants than we ever would have saved in buying vegetables. Just going to be honest with you, because most of them died. And the ones that grew, it's like they were only big enough for our youngest son, Judah, or for our oldest son now, Judah, to eat. So it was like, this ain't even good enough. So we had done all this planting, and nothing came of it. So when we went to our house that we're at currently, I got really excited when we looked outside and we saw all these trees, like these, these plant trees and, and these bushes and all this stuff, but we didn't know what they were. And I'm like, this is cool. We're not going to have to plant because clearly us planting things does not work. So I asked Nicole's parents, my in-laws, what those things were because they're good at that kind of stuff. 
And so they told us, they were like, it's peach trees. You got some apple trees. Now, before y'all get excited, the trees are about this tall. The people before us planted them. So the peaches were about this big this year. But I know coming one day, we're going to have some awesome trees. We have peach trees, apple, tre <coughs> apple trees. We have fig trees, persimmon trees. We had uh, blueberry bushes. We had grape vines. We had all these things. And I was all excited. And my father-in-law says, now, Dustin, for those grape vines, you need to build up something for the grapes to go on because if you don't, they're going to die on the ground before you can harvest them. So he said, it's important that before the grapes grow, before they're there, that you build some kind of vine thing, structure, whatever. He had the proper name. I don't know what it is. So you build this vine thing, and it grows on there, and then you have the grapes, and they don't die. And I'm like, this is cool. So I put it on my to-do list. You know where it's at? On my to-do list. Still, almost a year later, because... I was like, you know what, when the grapes start growing, that'll be my sign that it's time to build the vine holder, right? Whenever the grapes are born and, and start doing their thing, then I'm going to know, okay, I need to do the vine thing. But the grapes were born and died before I ever had a chance to build it up. So a few weeks later, I was walking around with, one of, uh, with this guy looking at the yard, and he tells me... <coughs> He says, hey, those are grapes over there. You need to build, and I said, I know, a vine contraption thing. And he said, yeah. And he said, but you need to do it. And I said, I know, before the grapes actually grow. And he laughed, and this dude on my property looks at me and says, well, then why haven't you done it yet? Get off my property right now. Right? But what this guy and what my father-in-law were trying to help me understand and realize is that I needed to build it up before the grapes got there. In my mind, I was wanting to wait until the grapes were there before I strengthened and reinforced them. But they were trying to let me know, if you don't build it up before the grapes show up, then by the time the grapes get there, it won't be strong enough to sustain it. And in our lives, we have to understand that we got to strengthen before we think that we need it. And that's the first thing I need you to see this morning, is you have to strengthen God told the Israelites, he said, you need to strengthen. They're coming next spring, but you need to strengthen now. They're not coming right now, but you got to prepare in advance. It said in verse number 22, afterward, the prophet came to the king of Israel and said, strengthen your position. Strengthen your position. The prophet told him, don't wait. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait until you see the army before you prepare. He said, you need to strengthen your position now. Strengthen your position today. Don't strengthen your position when you see the army because by then it's too late. By the time you realize that you need to strengthen it, it's too late. And so many of us are going around in our walks with Christ and we're, we're not strengthening anymore. We're not strengthened anymore. We've become comfortable. We've become familiar. We've, I'll go ahead and say it. We've become a little bit arrogant in our walk with God. We've become a little cocky in our walk with God. And we're not strengthened anymore. Well, I've been a follower of Jesus for 20 years. I don't need to go to that group. Well, I, I've read through the Bible three times in my life, I don't need to read the word. I prayed every day for all the, I don't, need to, I don't need to do those things anymore. And we've stopped strengthening because we've become comfortable and familiar with everything that we've been doing. We've won a victory, we've won a battle, and we've stopped in that moment because why do I need to strengthen? I've already won. And God said, you're not strengthening for the battle I just won you. You're strengthening for the battle that is to come. In 2020, I think we're seeing more than ever before how many people had become comfortable and stopped strengthening so when an actual attack came, we weren't ready for it. We weren't prepared. See, it's good in theory, right, when we're just saying strengthen, but then when they actually bring it down to where we're at, it's like, oh, don't go there. Don't, don't talk about that. Don't, don't go there. I don't want to hear that. 
But a lot of us, we became okay with being okay. We became okay with just, as long as my life isn't up in flames, as long as I'm in church sometimes, as long as everything is okay in my life, and as long as I conquered that battle and I'm feeling good because I won that battle, then I'm okay. But God did not call us to win a battle. He did not call us to conquer a victory. He called us in Romans 8.37, it says we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. But so often we just become comfortable. And, and, and we're like, we conquered one battle. We conquered one victory. You know, man, my relationship with my spouse was on the rocks and now it's good. So I'm feeling good. So now I don't need to do everything that I was doing to make it better in the first place. My kids are finally acting right. So I don't need them to be in church anymore. Well, everything kind of got worked out and, you know, and I was giving consistently and then God blessed my finances and here I am today, so now I don't need to do it anymore. I was in the word, I was praying, I was worshiping, but now everything's good, so I don't need to do it. And so often when we're in the battle, we have no problem crying out to God. But when everything's good, we don't think we need him anymore. So then when the battle comes... We're not ready because we didn't strengthen in the season where everything was okay. So now that there's an actual problem, it's too late. And I know that this is, I know that, like, this is heavy, right? I was telling Nicole, I was, I was talking to her yesterday, and I was like, man, you know, I'm a little nervous about tomorrow's message. She was like, why are you nervous? Like, you're not, you really, I, I really, you know, don't really get nervous that often. And I was like, because it's not one of those, like, woo, messages, you know? Like, everybody's like, yeah, I love that. It's one of those that this week when I was preparing for it, I was like, God, I don't want to say that. Can you wait? Can you wait a couple weeks until T's up here preaching and let him say it? Because I don't want to be the one to say it. Or maybe my roommate Trey, when he preaches, let him say it because, you know, he needs to kind of be humbled a little bit. I don't want to be the one that has to say it. But God said, no, no, no. Because so many of us have become so comfortable. We've become so comfortable. The only thing we want to hear is God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. Not after you've properly prepared. So I don't want to have to prepare. I just want God to do it. God told the Israelites, he said, listen, I got you out of that jam with Aram, but they're coming back next year. They're going to be bigger and they're going to be better. And you need to prepare now. God said, I'll be with you, but you need to prepare now, a year in advance, because next spring they will be back. They're going to attack again. What we got to understand is the enemy doesn't stop attacking. It's battle after battle after battle. It's not just we conquer this thing and we're good. It's not just we punched our card to heaven and we're good. No, it's a battle. That's why God said go out and get reinforcements. Go and make disciples. Don't just go through this thing on your own. Don't just be glad that you're going to heaven by yourself. Go and make disciples because we are in this thing together. It's not just about the one battle. It's not just about doing this one thing. My question is why do we as followers of Jesus find it so easy to be okay with being okay. Why, why do we find it so easy to rest on our laurels? You know, the definition of resting on your laurels is to become complacent and lazy because you are so busy basking in the memories of past victories. A lot of us are resting in our laurels when it comes to our walk with Christ. But God spoke to Ahab and the Israelites, and he said, listen, he said, it's not time to rest, it's time to strengthen. It's not time to just stop, it's time to strengthen. It's time to build off the victory. Don't just rest in that victory, build off that victory. So you conquered that one thing, awesome. Now build off of that, strengthen off of that. Don't just stop where you're at, but continue to strengthen yourselves. Strengthen yourselves, because the battle may be over, but the war wages on. You may have conquered that battle, but the war wages on. And God said, you got to prepare. you got to strengthen where you're at and prepare for what is to come. Because 
It's one thing. It's one thing to prepare on the last minute, like most of us did when we took tests in high school. I know somebody who is a lawyer now that literally made it through law school procrastinating. And I'm jealous because I'm sitting here and I'm like, if I didn't study for six weeks for every test I took, I would have failed every single one of them. I had good grades, but you know why? It's because I had to study. I had to try. But it's like, it's one thing when you procrastinate and to seek God in those moments. But can you seek him when it's good? Can you seek him when things are okay? The easiest way I know to tell you is what you do not continue to work begins to atrophy. When you stop praying, your walk with Christ begins to atrophy. When you stop seeking his face, your walk with Christ begins to atrophy. When you stop reading his word, your walk begins to atrophy. When you stop digging and seeing and going deeper with God, your walk begins to atrophy. When you stop hanging around like-minded believers, your walk begins to atrophy. Whenever you stop working something, your walk begins to atrophy. The reason that I am skinny today, I was once huge and jacked and buff, but I stopped working out and it began to atrophy. That's absolutely 100% not true. I've always looked like this, so I apologize for, for lying. But we often rest in the victory without preparing for the next. We often rest in, in celebrating in one victory without preparing for the next. So then when the next battle comes, because there will be a next battle, we're weaker than we were in the previous battle. And this is why so many people, we start out so strong for God, so on fire for God, so excited. We can tell everybody. We can't wait to tell somebody. We can't wait to read the word. We can't wait to pray. We can't wait to go to groups. We can't wait till any of these things. We just got to go deeper. We can't wait till Sunday morning. And then 20 years later, we forget to even watch Sunday morning. 20 years later, we forget to read our word for an entire week. Because we won the victory, and now we've become complacent and we're just resting, and we're not preparing for the next battle. If an Olympian wins a gold medal, do they just wait for four years to train again when they just show up for the No. As soon as they win the medal, they're immediately planning and training for their next time. They're immediately training because they know that their opponent is going to be back and is going to be greater, or they know they're going to be facing another opponent because your enemy does not always attack the same way. The enemy does not always come at you the same way. And by the way, you don't always have a heads up for when it's going to happen. How many call 2020 being 2020? How many of y'all said 2020 is going to be my year? Everybody. Enemy's not going to tell you when things are going to happen. Not going to prepare you for things that are going to happen. It's just going to happen. It's going to show up. That's why 2 Timothy 4.2 said, be ready in season and out of season. Now, we quote that, but how many of us actually live it? Be ready in season and be ready out season. We have to daily strengthen ourselves, daily prepare ourselves, daily get ready, daily say, God, show me areas in my life that I need to strengthen. Show me areas in my life where I'm weak that I need to improve on. Show me now because when the moment comes, I want to be ready. I don't want to be scrambling at the last minute trying to figure it out. I want to be ready when the moment comes. Well, you know, I haven't really been struggling with this temptation. It's not really been showing up in my life. So, you know, I was really seeking God when that was there. But now I don't really need to anymore. But don't worry. As soon as the temptation comes back, I'm going to be praying again. As soon as the temptation comes back, I'm going to be in God's word again. As soon as the temptation comes back, I'll be in church again. As soon as the temptation comes back... But if you wait until the urge of the addiction overtakes you, if you wait until you get the late night Netflix and chill invite, if you wait until you're messaging somebody that's not your spouse things that you should only be messaging your spouse, if you wait until somebody makes you mad enough to pop off at them and lose your temper, if you wait, if you're constantly waiting 
You're just, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. If you wait until the business decision that you're in causes you to do some unethical and immoral things in order to make it work, if you wait until you're in those moments, by then it's too late. If you wait until you're in the midst, God said, no, you need to strengthen now. Don't wait until it's too late to strengthen. Don't wait until it's too late to prepare. You got to strengthen now. Don't wait until it's too late to reinforce those things. Strengthen now. Somebody say strengthen now. In the comments type strengthen now. Strengthen now. Strengthen now. You got to read scripture when you don't think you need it so you can recall it when you do. Google on your phone is not always going to be with you. Oh, I'm in a bind. Let me Google. God, I need a scripture for stress. I do this. I'm not judging. I do this. But I literally went to, to my dad because my dad is like a walking Bible encyclopedia. It's a little frustrating. And I went to him many years ago and I said, hey, can you make me a, a like I'm talking document? Right, like, which for him a document is he writes with a pen. But I just basically, man, I want a lot of paper with verses that I need to know for my foundation. So that when any kind of attack comes, when I'm faced with anything, I know it in here and I'm not having to search for it. Because I was in a real bad habit of every time I face something, I'm like, oh, let me get my phone out. I got to Google that. Scriptures about Jesus. What was it that you're struggling with? Your pride, scripture's about Jesus helping with pride, right? Like, that can't happen. So, God, so dad gave me this long list. What was I doing? I was preparing. I was strengthening in advance. I was strengthening in here so that when the time came, when I needed it, I could recall it. Not waiting until the last minute. We're strengthening in advance so that way we can begin to see. And that's the next thing I need you to see. You strengthen so that you can see. <laughs> that's the next thing I need you to see. See? Uh, verse 22, continuing on. Dad joke. Strengthen your position and see what must be done. See what must be done. As we strengthen ourselves, then we begin to see the areas in our life where we're weak. As we strengthen our own hearts, as we strengthen our own lives, then we begin to see, oh, I need to work in that area. I've been having to go through physical therapy from an accident we were in last December. And they had me do this one little random thing with like 10 pounds. And I just had to do this right here. And my hip was like, is that? I was like, ah, oh, like I can't, oh, it hurts. And they said, well, that's because you're weak there. And I was like, I didn't know I was weak there. And then they proceeded to let me know that because my hip is weak, that my back is weak because my hip is a foundation and everything down. Because my hamstrings are weak, because my calves are weak, my back is weak. See, so we don't understand that the things that we don't work, the things that we don't train, we don't understand how weak they are until we put pressure on them. God said, you got to strengthen in advance so that you can see the areas that you're weak, so that you can see the areas that you need to improve, so that you can see the areas that you need to work on. Now, most of us like to pretend like we have no weaknesses. Where are my men at? We have nothing wrong. We have nothing we need to work on. We have nothing we need to improve on. It's like, I don't, I don't know the answer, but I'm not going to tell you I don't know the answer. I'm just going to act like I do. Most of us like to pretend like nothing needs to be done in our lives. Nothing needs to be improved in our lives. Like we have it all figured out. I know everything that I need to do. I don't need to strengthen anything. It's always everybody else, right? You got 99 problems. I have none. It's everybody else. Have you noticed how the things that you're so easy to point out in everybody else's life are usually the things that you struggle with the most? And the reason that you find it so easy to point it out in everyone else's life is because you're all too familiar with it but you're not willing to admit it. You're not willing to open your eyes up and see, see this thing. You're not, you're not willing and able to see that there's a sweetness. It's just everybody else. God told Ahab, he said, listen, you need to see what needs to be done in your own camp. You need to see what needs to be done in your house. Get your house in order. Get your camp in order. It's easy to see what needs to be done in everybody else's camp. It's easy to see what everybody else needs to do. 
Some of y'all can look at me and you're like, man, he needs to work on this, 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 this. I can look at you and say they need to work on this, 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 this. But it takes strength to look at yourself and to see what do, what do I need to work on? Where am I weak? God, begin to show me the areas in my life that I've allowed myself to fall off. Show me the areas in my life that I've allowed myself. My, my ego's gotten in the way. Show me the areas in my life where my pride is in the way. Show me the areas in my life where that relationship is in the way because I've been relying on that relationship instead of relying on you. God, show me the areas that I'm weak. Show me the areas that I need to work. Pretending that we're perfect, pretending we have it all figured out, pretending that we have no problems does not help. It only hurts. It leaves areas in your life for the enemy to expose and attack. Leaves you wide open for the enemy to show up and to do whatever it is that he wants to do. We should daily, constantly be striving to find areas in our lives that we need God to work. Find areas in our lives. God said, listen, I want you to strengthen and I want you to see what must be done. And what an honest prayer it would be for us to say, God, I know I've spent a lot of time talking about what everybody else needed to do. I know I've spent a lot of time saying, hey, people voting for that guy, whoo, Lord, work on them. Because they think he's the savior. While at the same time, I think the guy I'm voting for is the savior. <laughs> Y'all think I'm going to keep talking. I'm just going to chill for a minute. What an honest prayer it would be for us to say, God, what in my life, I'm not worried about everybody else. You deal with them. God, what in my life have I allowed to become weak? God, what have I allowed in my life in this season? Because I'll be honest with you, in this season, probably more than any other I've lived in my life, it's become painfully easy to allow ourselves to become spiritually weak. Because the enemy, he got us separated, right? So now we're in it on our own. Then we become tired on our own, fighting this thing on our own. So then we just stop fighting. And I'm not reading the word anymore, and I'm not praying anymore. God, what in my life have I allowed to become weak in this moment? Where is it? Because... God wants us to prepare for the battle, but before we can prepare, we have to acknowledge things that we need to prepare. We have to acknowledge things that we need to strengthen. How can you strengthen anything if you think that you're already strong? God, help me to see where I'm weak so that I can prepare. And that's the last thing I want you to see this morning. It said, afterward, the prophet came to the king of Israel and said, strengthen your position and see what must be done because next spring the king of Aram will attack you again. The king of Aram will attack you again. He will. It's not a maybe. It's not a he might. It's not a possibility. It's a guarantee. Guarantees in life are death, taxes, and attacks from the enemy. It's a guarantee. The enemy's going to come at you again. We have to prepare when we don't think that we need it, so that we're ready when we do. Prepare in advance. Strengthen in advance. God, I'm not waiting for the attack to come to me. I'm not waiting for the battle to come to me. But God, I'm preparing in advance. Because what happens is we allow things to, to kind of take over in our lives. We overcome one battle so then we don't prepare for the next. So then when something happens, we feel so good about it that we don't even look in our lives to see areas that we need to strengthen. So then when the, the second battle comes, we're weaker than we were the first time. We're less ready for it than we were the first time. I don't know if you were here last week or not or joined us online last week or not. For those of you who weren't, fire alarm went off literally right in the middle of the message. That was the first. I'm like, I'm asking dad. Dad's been in ministry. My dad has for like, 50 years, okay? I'm like, hey, you know, because they were out of town last week. I'm like, man, I should have had you preach. 
I said, um, you know, like, have you ever had a fire alarm go off while you were preaching? It's like, nope, sure haven't. Cool. Thanks, God. I'm like, this is why I wasn't trained for this. Fire alarm went off middle of the message. No big deal. But what you may not know, or may, you may know if you're part of the worship team or the tech team, is a few weeks before that, the fire alarm went off on a Sunday morning during rehearsal, during worship rehearsal. Before anybody else got here, it had, it had gone off a couple weeks ago. And we got it turned off and everything was good for service. Now, instead of doing some investigative work and looking into why it went off the week before, we just said, man, I'm glad that wasn't during service. I mean, seriously, we were like, whoo, thank you, Lord, that that wasn't during service. Thank you, Lord, that that was just during rehearsal. I mean, they can put up with, you know, they have to start, stop all the time. Thank you it wasn't during service. We didn't, we didn't climb up there and check out the smoke detector. We didn't call in Rodney, our, our, our man, the main man, Rodney, who, who put it all in. We didn't call him in to investigate it, look into it. We just said, whoo, thank you, Lord. We slid by on that one by an hour. Didn't do anything about it. So then, last Sunday, in the middle of service, the fire alarm went off again. So Rodney came out Sunday, Sunday evening, he looked into it, and he called me. And first of all, he was like, man, I was watching live online when it happened, and I was laughing so hard at your face. And I'm like, I don't know how to take that, but thank you. And he's like, man, yeah, I don't know, I'll look into it. So he looks into it, and he proceeded to tell us that we had a faulty smoke detector. That's what we think. If it goes off again, I don't know what to tell you, just, it's okay. He's like, it has a, sm a, a faulty smoke detector. And he said, so I, I replaced it and I put in a new one. So now we're better, like we're prepared for this Sunday. We're good to go. Everything's good to go. But if we would have looked into it the Sunday that it went off the first time, instead of just saying, whoo, I'm glad that we survived that one. I'm glad we made it through that one. I'm glad that didn't go off while I was preaching. I'm glad that didn't go off in the If we would have stopped on that week and said, hey, let's prepare, let's like check this thing out. Let's see the area that it's weak. Let's see what we can do to get better ready instead of just being glad that it didn't go off on that week. And this is how so many of us live our lives. We're just so happy that we made it through. Woo, I barely made it through that battle, but I made it through. Thank you, Lord. I made it through this situation. Thank you. I made it through that problem. Thank you. That we're not preparing for the next battle. We're not getting ready to prepare for what we're facing ahead. We're not getting set and ready and figuring out, hey, what caused that thing? What can I do to better prepare? What can I do to better strengthen myself so that it doesn't happen again? See, the more we procrastinate, the more stressed we become. I got to tell you, last Sunday when the fire alarm went off, I was stressed I'm in the middle of a series preaching on being stressed and getting it out of your life. And I'm up here stressed because we procrastinated on checking out the fire system. So often in our lives, we just procrastinate and we put it off and we put it off. And yeah, I got that problem, but I'll deal with it next time. And yeah, I got this situation, but I made it through today. And the kingdom of God is not meant to be a reactive kingdom. It's meant to be proactive. It's not meant for us to be reacting to everything that comes. It's meant for us to proactively be saying, God, prepare me. Get me ready. Show me where I need to strengthen. Show me where I'm weak. I don't want to be stressed out when that comes. I want to be there confident. I want to know that God's got this. I want to know that you've already helped me in this area of my life. So when that temptation comes, I'm ready for it. I'm not trying to figure out how to handle it now, but I'm ready for it before it ever gets here. It's a proactive kingdom. Before the battle ever comes, we should be in communion with him. We should be saying, God, strengthen the areas of my life. Help me to see what needs to be done. And God, I pray that you would prepare me. God, I'm in communion with you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm in alignment with you. I'm not going into alignment when everything gets bad. God, I'm in alignment with you in this moment. And I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I'm training in advance. I'm not just resting. I'm not just hanging out. I'm not just cool with it. God, I'm training in advance. I'm growing. I'm preparing 
in advance.